Hello everybody, this is Rudra Pradhan here. Welcome you all again for this particular subject, Business Analytics for Management Decisions. We are in the process of third lecture and that to again introduction to business analytics. So, today we will discuss details about our you know analytics requirements. So, let me highlight here the particular you know structures. So, this is how we are you know in the week ones and uh, introduction to business analytics. So, uh, so today's discussions we have uh, the following highlights. So, the first component we would like to discuss is stepwise process of business analytics, then understanding of variables, understanding of variables uh, uh, and then uh, understanding of data, data strategy, visualizations and data modeling. So, these are the components we are going to address. So, the first component is the stepwise process of business analytics and for that you, you are supposed to know the variables kind of you know requirement then or corresponding to variables. So, your you know data requirement then it will be followed by data strategy, data visualization and data modeling. Let us start with the actually stepwise process of business analytics. Okay. So, uh, so what we can go. Okay. So, so, the first end requirement is okay, so the, uh, here we will start. So, in business analytics, so uh, or you know one of the most important requirement or input is called as you know data and uh, the literary meaning of data is nothing but called as you know informations. So, informations cannot be meaningful until unless you specify a particular you know variable. So, that is why first there is a variables indications then any information relating to that variable is nothing but called as you know data. So, that is why first you understand what is exactly the variable concept then data and corresponding to variables and data you have the con particular component called as you know database and informations where actually a comes from to analyze the particular you know requirement. So, four items we are supposed to highlight variable data, database and informations. Database and information is not something actually very important in this stage. So, what is important is you, you know you understand variables first and then what is exactly the data structure. So, the variables simply called as the instrumental in understanding problems relating to analytics. So, that means, so variables and data these are the two components very very tough for you know any kind of you know business analytics or that to any kind of you know business related problems until unless you quantify a particular you know variables and that too with the help of you know data. So, you are in you are not in a position to pick up any techniques or you are not in a position to use any techniques for any kind of you know management decision. So, that is why so, in any any case, so you are supposed to actually uh, recognize the problem, then transfer the problems in the form of you know uh, identifying the variables and then collect the information corresponding to these, these variables and after that analytics can be played very fantastic roles. So, these are the uh, important you know uh, requirements and that too you must understand all these things until unless you understand variables properly and data properly. So, again so you are not in a position to pick up techniques business analytics techniques for you know solving business related problem. Because some of the some of the analytical tools are you know uh, very uh, uh, you know uh, uh, specific kind of you know requirement. For instance, uh, 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 let me first highlight then I will I will I will discuss in details right. So, so, here is. So, before we start the process, so let me uh, give you a kind of you know snapshot here. So, what uh, what is in, in uh, you know variables all together? So, variable is nothing but actually something related to a particular you know attribute. So, and that will be that will be changing over the uh, that will be changing over the time. So, uh, the 
questions uh, time or with respect to any kind of you know cross sectional units. So, before we start this particular you know structure data variables, so let me give you some kind of you know clarification here. So, when we will talk about variables, so the variables can be can be called as you know qualitative variables, can be called as you know quantitative variables. So, now when you call as a variable qualitative and variable quantitative, then obviously it is on the basis of some information. If the information is qualitative, then by default the variable is called as a qualitative variable. Then if the information is numeric, then the by default this variable is called as a quantitative. For instance, let us say uh, gender is a kind of you know variables. So, now gender reporting can be male and female, then by default, so it is called as you know qualitative variables. Let us say uh, profit is a kind of you know variables, where you know we are putting actually 10, uh, uh, 10 billion dollars or 15 billion dollars, then it is numerically expressed. So, then, then this profit component can be called as actually quantitative variables. So, now in we, we a business analytics is a kind of you know uh, kind of in you know, a area or kind of in you know, a subject or uh, tool basket, it can be applied any kind of you know environment, it is it is a it is it can be marketing, it can be HR, it can be operation research, it can be finance, even if you know some of the engineering fields or you know social science field, other social science fields we can also apply. So, as a result when you apply different kind of you know uh, you know environment, so the variables names will be you know differently represented. So, the first understanding of variables uh, variables is like that the structure of quantitative variables and qualitative variables. Now, whether it is a quantitative variable or qualitative variables, so the second understanding or you know requirement is so the structure of actually dependent classification and independent classification. Sometimes some of the analytic tools they need you know uh, there is a requirement of uh, what we call as you know classification of dependent variable and independent variable. For instance, we have a multivariate ba tool baskets and then some of the tools can be called as you know dependence technique structure and some of the tools can be called as a interdependence technique structure. And when we apply any kind of you know dependence technique uh, analytics or dependence techniques or dependence analytics, then that times there is a most that you know you have to first declare which one is the dependent variable and which one is the independent variable. So, uh, in the case of you know interdependence technique like uh, like say correlation, covariance, so we may not require actually any kind of you know distinction between or you know difference between or the kind of you know declaration of dependent variable and independent variable, but some of the techniques you know it is most this uh, excellent example is the regression tools. Any kind of you know, regression techniques uh, you are supposed to declare first which one is the dependent variable and which one is the independent variable. Since we are using these techniques in various fields, so uh, these are all you know uh, used differently. Sometimes uh, it is called as endogenous variable, sometimes it is called versus exogenous variable, explained, explanatory, effect and cause, then like uh, control, uh, uh, control and uh, uh, controlled and control, outcome and covariate, then uh, uh, you know regression and a, a regressor predictant and predictor, response and stimulus. So, that means technically, so uh, this is actually the independent cluster and this is what the independent cluster. Uh, technically, uh, what is actually, so the structure is like this, it is a, it's a uh, variables and this can be divided into two parts, the qualitative variables and it can be quantitative variables. Then this qualitative variables qualitative variables you uh, you are supposed to declare uh, you know dependent variables and independent variables and quantitative variables you have to declare dependent variable and independent independent variables of course it is it is all requires when you have a kind of you know multivariate environment so when you, you uh, when you are dealing with a single variable then the dependent classification and independent classification is not at all requires so when you are solving a problem where there are multiple uh, variables are there so, some of the variables uh, in some of the instances you are supposed to actually declare which one is the dependent variable and which one is independent variable. But when uh, uh, when you are you know targeting data to a you know particular variable, then this times we are not we are not having any kind of you know business to you know differentiate which one is the dependent and which one is the independent. 
<laughs> the business is a uh, business uh, of this particular you know uh, you know classification where we we like to choose a particular technique so for instance when you choose a particular technique say regression then this particular divisions is required when you are using a technique called as a correlation this particular division may not be required okay so this is how uh, you, you have to be very careful how you have to address this particular you know situations right Okay, so now I will give you some kind of you know, hint here. The question is called as you know data architectures. So uh, we have a discuss actually first class clarification which I have given is called as you know variable. So now any information related to variables, whether it's a dependent or you know independent variable, qualitative variable or quantitative variables, but that is what it's called as you know data. Again, we have a big big uh, understanding or you know big deal with you know data. So, data can be on can be understood in following angles. So, big data versus small data, primary versus primary data versus secondary data, uh, quantitative data, qualitative data. So, uh, so, this is same actually when we call as a variable qualitative variable or quantitative variable, it is the data which can actually uh, recognize this experimental data, non experimental data. Okay. So, this is experiment experimental data and non experimental data then structured data, unstructured data, internal data, external data, traditional data, new data, uh, free and purchase, then finally historical data. So, these are all actually the following requirement. For instance, uh, this is the game between big data and small data. So, we in statistic we have a structure called as actually population and samples. So, I can put like this you know big data means it is a population big basket and small data means it is actually sample one is a, a subset of a particular you know set. So, that means uh, uh, the, the tendency is that you know if you have actually big set of you know or big availability of data. So, you can go for you know very in depth search or you know in depth kind of you know analysis. If you have a small data then you have lots of you know uh, constraint uh, and uh, as a result you may not get better insights to this particular problem. So, uh, so try to have always you know uh, big data. So, once you have a big data then obviously, uh, you can get better insights and that insights can help you lot to get some kind of you know better management decision. Then the second understanding must be uh, primary data and secondary data. Primary data means you, you are collecting at the root levels, uh, you are collecting collecting data at the root level and secondary data means somebody collected for you. For instance, any data you are collecting from a database is a classic example of you know secondary data. Primary data means you just go to some, some organization and you know uh, collect the informations like you know what is your name, what is your qualifications, what is your age, what is your salary like this. So, these are you know first hand information you are just you know. Uh, collecting and this this is the example of you know primary data, but you know primary data uh, uh, primary data has advantage and has limitations. Similarly, secondary data has advantage and uh, limitations. But depending upon the situation and the requirement, you have to use accordingly, right? Then similarly, quantitative data and qualitative data, uh, so which we have already highlighted. And similarly, experimental data and non experimental data, data can be collected from the experimental basis, and some of the data can, you know can be derived without any experimentation. General, most of the engineering or you know science field, some of the data are readily available on you know experimental basis, and we need to actually analyze. Then another kind of you know understanding should be structured and versus unstructured, so like this structured and unstructured. So, sometimes see if your data is very structured, then you know analysis can be very fast and you know very accurate and you can go very uh, your movement will be very uh, you know very fast and effective but non unstructured data means you have to first make it structured so okay unstru for example what is mean by actually unstructured data that means it may not be in a proper format right some uh, some missing data may be available or some data you know uh, or not in a particular you know shape with respect to time or with respect to any kind of you know cross sectional units so that's why uh, uh, you know uh, see if when you are using secondary data uh, you may find that you know this is by default may be unstructured because that fellow might have collected for uh, some different use and you you are you know using the data for your requirement or you know your use so his or her requirement may not coincide with your requirement. So, that is why you need to 
structure the data as per your you know requirement. So, that is why first you understand all these things before you go to some kind of you know analysis. Then the internal and external data, this is not actually big deal, this is actually when you are dealing with a kind of you know business environment. So, a particular business, so any data related to their you know organization is nothing but called as the internal data and uh, anything outside uh, means anything any information outside that particular you know business is nothing called as you know external data. Similarly, traditional and new data, traditional data means already uh, available for new data means it is newly uh, you know it is kind of you know modification upgradations kind of you know things and uh, free purchase that is not important for this analytics and historical data this is very important because we need actually the uh, historical data uh, for most of the uh, business analytics tools without any uh, past informations then you are not in a position to predict actually properly to the futures of course you know uh, i will give you you know better understanding uh, after this because data can be actually classified into uh, two time and you know cross sectional any data any variables reporting with respect to time is called as a time series data any data uh, you know reported with respect to any kind of you know cross sectional unit is called as you know cross sectional data for instance companies uh, you know profit of you know companies okay for a particular years let's say we are fixing a year 2019 or, or 2017 then you are you know uh, reporting some kind of you know figures you know predicted figures or something like that uh, let us say 2017, so you are putting you know company A, company B, company C like that you know. So, for a particular year different companies like this. So, let us say this, this is a year and this is the company and this is the profits. So, putting fix, uh, fixing here a year like 2017 company 1, 2, 3 and you know profit figures you are reporting. So, this reporting is called as actually cross sectional reporting. So, now in other sides you are putting actually cross sectional fixed and putting year and then you are putting actually profit uh, profit here. So, cross sectional unit means let us say put a company 1 and then company 1 with respect to let us say 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004 and so these are all reporting over the time. So, this particular reporting is called as actually time series reporting and as a result this data is called as a time series data and this kind of you know structure is called as a cross sectional structure and the data reporting is called as a you know cross sectional data. In the cross sectional data, so time is fixed, but cross sectional units will vary, but in the case of time series a particular cross sectional unit will fix and time will vary. So, we will get we will we will discuss in details in the later stage when we need a, all these you know uh, kind of you know understanding or you know requirement. Okay. So, Okay. So, uh, uh, so, this is how uh, you have to be structured here. Okay. So, now uh, uh, okay. So, this is what actually strategy which I have already discussed. So, we actually need actually big data. Okay. We need actually big data means, so that means the stability of the analysis will be very high, the efficiency of your particular analysis will be very high. So, now if your data will be very small, then some of the techniques you may not in a position to apply. So, when you have actually more data or you know big data, any technique uh, you can apply as per the particular requirement and of course, it should be feasible one. Okay. So, but if you have a uh, if you have a very small data, then some of the top class techniques as per the business requirement or you know business investigation, you may not in a position to you know apply. So, that is how that is how your strategy should be always you know having having you know more data that is what is called as you know big data. So, that is a, a there is a you know well saying higher the sample or you know higher the data higher is the model accuracy or you know high, higher is the prediction accuracy or uh, you know more uh, higher can be you know or better you know management decisions. So, that is why you must have a you know big data that means complete informations and that too in a maximum length. Okay. So, that that is what the strategy should be if you are you know information is lacking and information is not sufficient and not in a long interval, then the uh, investigation may not be very effective and you cannot get the insights properly and you are not in a position to analyze properly and as a result the whole process will be in a different shape altogether and uh, that too you cannot get you know better inference and then 
uh, your management decision may be uh, not effective. So, that is why, so your strategy should be uh, like that you know you must have high, uh, you know high sample size or you know you must have a big data. Once you have big data, you have the a kind of you know flexibility, you can pick up the particular sample as per the requirement, you know fix the time period or fix the kind of you know uh, fix a, a particular you know uh, structure or you know cross sectional structure then you know pick up the samples. So, it is you to decide how to take, but if the availability is not there then you have lots of you know negatives to apply this business analytics as per your you know business requirement. Some of the standard examples of you know uh, uh, data for business analytics are you know annual reporting, accounting audits, uh, financial profitability analysis, economic trends, marketing research, operations management performance and HRM. So, these are you know classic examples th through which you know you know these are all you know it is basically it is a it is basically the uh, uh, you know uh, data and that to Oh, as per you know kind of you know uh, requirement for you know uh, all kind of you know uh, business activities. So, uh, the ho, uh, the message or you know signal is that you know without data all these items cannot be uh, cannot be analyzed properly or you may not in a position to understand properly and forget about the kind of you know further in depth study by using any kind of you know business analytics and as per your you know business requirement. So, you are supposed to actually uh, first you know understand uh, or you know uh, record properly then you have to uh, you have to have actually proper kind of you know understanding ok. So, here is so ok next uh, so this is actually the uh, uh, concept called as you know visualization of data. So, your data can be recorded like this. So, some of the examples are uh, you know 1, 2, 50, 500, Kharagpur, genders, then the roll numbers, the emails. So, it is a kind of you know standard reporting format. So, you, uh, you know it is a visualization of data means uh, 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 you know what are the ways actually you capture the informations and you record the informations and then you, uh, you have to visualize and you have to properly utilize because you know sometimes you know let us say. Uh, this particular uh, structure 1, 2, 50, 500, this is actually numeric, uh, numeric representations, right. But uh, uh, the other sides are you know qualitative reporting. So, that is why these, uh, these are all actually what I call you know qualitative variables, but you know this is for instance Kodakpur. So, this is actually the variable will be place, right. Uh, gender, this is actually human research component, this is also a qualitative variables, uh, this is roll number. So, this is actually qualitative information. So, now what is happening actually? So, but these are all you know data, these are all information which can actually uh, uh, can be used and can be applied for you know uh, investigation and to get some kind of you know, inference, but it is the uh, it is not in a pro what I can call as you know in a proper structure. So, you have to streamline it as per your requirement, then uh, you can apply analytics tools to get some kind of you know decision. For examples, uh, you know for examples let us say this is a qualitative variables and informations are you know like Kharagpur gender etcetera. But by the way when you use any kind of you know, analytics tools or you know kind of you know spreadsheets. So, these are all not numeric actually. So, some are numeric and some are not numeric as a result you are not in a position to correlate properly. So, what is actually requirement uh, what is the requirement? Uh, is that that you have to transfer all these qualitative information into coding ok. So, that means, so that means these are the these are the qualitative variables need to be coded first you know that means, some quantification is uh, required here. So, once you quantify properly then these qualitative information can be uh, can be converted into some you know quantity format and after that you are in a position to address uh, address this you know uh, kind of you know problems. Right. So, data for business analytics can be can be understood from the following angles. So, it can be matrix uh, you know that is that means, uh, they are you know used to quantify the particular you know performance, measures are numerical values of matrix and it can be discrete and it can be continuous. It can be discrete and it can be continuous and sometimes it may be on time and sometimes not on times. 
and uh, some of the classic examples are you know in continuous uh, me measured on continuous scale you know delivery time package weight purchase price all these things are there so that means actually so it's question of you know metric and non metric then discrete and continuous so you must be very careful wh while you know recording or you know preparing this spreadsheet or you know using this data for any kind of an analysis because uh, data uh, you know the uh, the understanding of data is very important okay so if your data structure is not clear properly then you are not in a position to analyze uh, you know effectively so you must be very careful how uh, what are the ways actually you have recorded and what is the particular you know, structure it, it is actually you need actually excellent strategy how you have to streamline this particular process uh, data analytics is actually very easy to pick up actually because it's a very uh, you know very technical kind of nothing you know, but this is not so technical actually so there is in need of you know lots of you know uh, kind of you know process or things to uh, to transfer into uh, uh, particular you know requirement okay so this is this must be very you must be very careful so i am giving you here you know some standard examples the standard examples these are all you know uh, uh, reporting this is a simple spreadsheet and the data are you know recorded uh, with you know customer id uh, then uh, uh, for instance this is actually customer id uh, okay so this is uh, uh, this is actually purchase orders uh, then uh, okay anyway so this uh, what we can say okay so these are all actually i am giving you three examples here so this is sales transactions uh, and customer ID, ID, region wise, then payment wise, then transaction code, source, then amount, product. These are all you know proper recording. I think you know uh, anybody can understand uh, you know uh, this reporting, and this is called as you know standard reporting. Uh, so far as you know uh, data is concerned. Similarly, there is another examples here: supplier informations, then order number. Uh, then you know uh, uh, name, name item descriptions, uh, item cost, uh, you know qu quantity, and and uh, you know uh, cost per orders like this. You know it is again you know another kind of you know uh, standard reporting. But here, what is the important? You know the structure of you know the kind of you know uh, qu quantitative data and qualitative data. So now I will give you some kind of you know, snapshot, you know, or you know, bit, uh, structure through which you can understand the qualitative data in a much better way, or some kind of you know data structure. Usually, when uh, when your structure is not you know uh, proper format, then we use a Likert scale, and then we have to gather the informations, and uh, uh, accordingly. Uh, accordingly the data can be actually recorded and you know uh, 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 gathered so here so there are four different kind of you know structures so one particular structure is called as a uh, categorical data that is nominal and that's ex exclusively actually kind of you know qualitative in nature like you know uh, gender religions etc and then uh, second one is the ordinal data third one is the uh, interval data and fourth one is the uh, ratio data. So, these are you know four different strong classifications. So, far as actually uh, data recording is concerned or data collection is concerned, I will give you some kind of you know examples. Okay. So, uh, under these four categories. So, the first uh, uh, category is the categorical data that is nominal structure, and uh, uh, these are actually these data are placed in categories according to a specified you know uh, feature. Uh, so, uh, categorical data have no quantitative relationship to one another. For instance, uh, customers locations, customers location with respect to different uh, you know region of a particular country, employee classifications, uh, then employee classification with respect to genders, employee classification with different kind of you know clusters say adult and child. So, these are actually the classic example of you know categorical data. So, while you are recording the data you must have a, a understanding on this. Then ordinal data, data that is ranked or, or order according to some relationship with one another. So, no fixed units of measurement again here. So, examples some of the examples are college football rankings, management schools ranking, 
survey responses like you know poor average good very good excellent and so on so uh, so this is a kind of you know hierarchy kind of you know things you are supposed to mean so the, uh, this is also one kind of you know recording and this particular recording is it called as you know ordinal data structure then uh, third one is called as a interval data uh, ordinal data but with constant difference between observations no true zero point but ratios are not actually meaningful so here some of the examples are you know temperature readings set score cat score toffel scores uh, uh, like uh, these are the classic examples uh, you can you know uh, you can put in the case of you know interval data and then finally uh, uh, you know ratio data this is actually very rich data uh, data structure and continuous values and have a natural zero point uh, ratios are meaningful and uh, usually the examples are you know like monthly sales delivery times weekly sales processing times okay so these are all you know uh, order times so these are all actually a, the classic example of you know ratio type of data but by the way at the end of the day so you must have a data whether it is a, a whether it is by default in a numeric format or not in a numeric format but at the end of the day you must have a spreadsheet having all kind of you know information and if it is a, a not in a numeric format you have to put to some kind of you know structure and numerically differentiate and then that should be finally a only in a numbers okay so that should be transferred in such a way that should be a, you know all in all must be in a numbers so that is how what i mentioned actually the structure versus unstructured when we will say that you know unstructured sometimes the data you know some are you know in a numeric and some are not in a numeric then you know uh, by default you cannot just apply a particular technique. So, when you, be, uh, when you choose a particular technique or when you like to analyze this data as per your requirement. So, be ensured that you know all these data are you know in a particular format that means we need actually consistency uh, consistency in a data recording or you know data uh, database. Uh, if you, you have no consistency as per your requirement then you may not in a position to analyze it. So, this is one of the most important things you are supposed to highlight the particular you know. So, mathematically there is actually uh, a, you can you know on uh, you can clarify the distinction between ratio, interval and ordinal and nominal. For instance, take two variables to take two variables x 1 and uh, x 2 and then we can have actually let us say x 1 is positive and x 2 is positive and then uh, 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 you know any reporting x 1 or any reporting to x 2 is a kind of you know data. Now, x 1 and x 2 can uh, you can apply any kind of an you know, operation. So, this is actually x 1 by x 2 or x 2 by x 1 and another kind of you know division here and this is another division. So, uh, if all these divisions can be possible these are all called as you know data processing and uh, sometimes unstructured and you will make a structured by this you know uh, process and if any you have a data and you can process uh, all these you know operations then this particular data is called as you know ratio data that is how it is called as you know rich data uh, data structure. Then if, if out of this if you know uh, only the first one is not uh, available then this this one x x 1 minus x 2 or x 2 minus x 1 x 1 greater than x 2 or x 2 greater than if that can be uh, done so then this particular structure is it uh, you know recognized as you know interval structure. And again finally, the if the last one only actually meaningful and others two are not meaningful then this is what is called as you know ordinal structure. And if all these three are all these three ratios and interval and ordinal are not available then uh, the final one is called as actually nominal or categorical. So, that means all together so data has to be recorded uh, in uh, as per the requirement and once data will be recorded then uh, you know uh, uh, in, in a put in a kind of you know structure then you are in a position to analyze as per the particular technique and as per the particular you know business requirement ok. So, so this is this is what actually uh, the thing like this and what I have already mentioned that you know data can be actually classified into uh, uh, time and you know cross. So, sometimes you know if any dat variables are reporting with respect to time then that is called as a time series data any data reporting with respect to cross sectional that is called as a cross sectional data. So, now when you will be pulling time with the cross that is called as actually pull data 
and then uh, if you are you know within the pool data for instance let me give an example here uh, uh, this is actually i will put here i and i will put here t and then i will put you know variable say x1 and x2 like the previous uh, highlights so i represent the cross sectional units i represents here cross sectional unit cross sectional units and then t represents here time and then uh, it, it, it let's say we will take one, uh, one, two, three, three different cross sectional units and we will take one, two, three, three different times time units then there will be a reporting here. So, now uh, see here is x 1 uh, let us say 10, 20, 30 then we will put in you know, of 5, 7, 9. So, now uh, putting i remain constant let us say cross sectional unit means company 1, company 1 three different time periods. Okay, so, they are you know reporting the data. So, now this is what actually called as you know time series reporting. Now, other way can be happened. So, suppose one will be constant here, you put one constant here, then time one constant, then it will be have a data like this. Okay, this will be having this will be having called as actually a cross sectional over uh, you know reporting. So, uh, time one particular time period, but we are reporting against you know three different cross sectional unit, then this can be also reporting. So, that means it depends upon how you are you know setting. So, now Oh, uh, you start like this when i equal to 1 then you have a three different time periods then two uh, you have a two oh, oh, cross sectional units then you have a three different time periods and three cross sectional unit and having three time periods that means technically when you are fixing i equal to 1 then you have a three data uh, three data points when you are fixing again uh, uh, you know i equal to 2 then you have three different time periods data and when you are fixing i equal to 3 you have a three different time periods data then now what we can do? So, you can just copy paste copy paste copy paste like this then you know you will find uh, uh, finally, 9 into 9 uh, 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 data points. So, that particular structure is called as actually pool data. So, now within the pool data when you are you know studying the impact of you know uh, cross sectional uh, unit and time series unit then this becomes called as actually panel data. So, now, uh, so these are the uh, standard understanding of the data and similarly, we have a plenty of examples here, we have a plenty of examples here uh, uh, to know the time series data and kind of you know, frequency. Uh, similarly, this can be also cross sectional data if you change uh, if you fix a particular time period and then you know, changing like you know country, state etcetera like this. So, uh, so these are actually various examples of you know data with the help of all these things. Uh, you can actually uh, go for some kind of you know discussions right okay so here actually some of the better understanding of the data and corresponding to the data structures we have a different kind of you know modeling framework which we will discuss in the later stage and uh, when we are connecting with a particular technique called as you know panel data modeling. So, during that times I will highlight in details about these three models and then connect with you know different structures and I will I'll, I'll like to highlight that times how this particular you know structure can give better insight as per the business requirement. Okay, so, these are you know final kind of you know understanding about the data analytic process. So, master data management, data visualizations, data quality, data integration, data transformations and data governance. So, that means wh while using the data final data for your you know business requirement you, you have lots of things uh, you are not supposed to address. You have to understand the data, check all these you know obstacles, then you know make it very structured as per your requirement then if possible you can transfer the data, transpose the data then you know you can actually finally have proper uh, in a proper order or then uh, you can actually in a position to apply some kind of you know techniques to solve the business problems as per the requirement. With this we will stop here. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.